Hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Richard Kowalski. I work uh, at the Faculty of Food Science and Nutrition at the Poznan University of Life Sciences. I would like to present uh, training materials on the production of meat analogs, uh, in particular uh, those obtained by extrusion uh, method. Yeah, uh, the term plant-based meat uh, is used to refer to plant-based products designed to replace animal meat. This includes products that uh, replicate the taste and texture of meats, as well as products made from plants such as jackfruit, seitan, tofu and tempeh that serve uh, as a functional meat replacements. Although fungi and uh, alga are not uh, biologically classified as plants, fungi and alga-based products are included in this definition of plant-based meat. Global growth uh, in the plant-based meat industry has exploded over the past few years. Hundreds of plant-based meat startups have been launched in countries as varied as Brazil, China, India, Israel, the Netherlands and the United States. Many established food and uh, agribusiness companies are launching plant-based products and uh, hundreds of millions of investment dollars are pouring into the plant-based meat space. Plant-based burgers now have a 3.4% market share in the fast food sector. U.S. retail sales of plant-based meat were 9.39 million U.S. dollars in 2019. It's growing 80% year over year, more than six times faster than animal meat and occurring for 2% of retail packaged meat sales. Similar trends are occurring uh, in other regions of the world, with the European Union seeing 15% uh, of co compounds annual growth rates. For al alternative proteins and China exercising about 14% year over year, growth in, in domestic plant-based meat industry. Investment bank uh, UBS forecast 28% compounds annual growth for global plant-based meat sales, taking the category from less than 5 billion in 2018 US dollars, 85 billions in 2030. Kearney sees significant and disruptive growth for the current crop of plant-based meat products, which is described as novel vegan meat replacements. Such plant-based products will account for 10% of global meat consumption within five years. Also, Kearney company analysts expect cultured meat to eventually account for a larger share of the market than plant-based. Plant and funky-based uh, meat, PBM products, encompass the flavor, texture and uh, nutritional aspects of meat, but are different in composition. Namely, are made from non-animal sourced uh, materials based on the time of development and technically complexity. PBM products can be differentiated uh, into two flexible categories, traditional and novel, for example, next generation. Traditional meat analogs were developed thousands of years ago in Asia and include relatively simple derivatives from soybeans, for example, tofu, tempeh or wheat, for example, seitan. In contrast, novel PBMs are characterized by the design and marketing of products as near equivalent replacements for ABM 
with regards to taste, texture, and nutrition. Products categories can also exist between traditional and novel, as they many meet some, but not all of the aforementioned criteria. A distribution map of global companies and brands developing novel PBMs can be found in the future, which you can see at the presentation. Typically, the production of PBM includes three steps. <clears throat> Protein isolation and functionalizing, sorry, <laughs> target plant proteins are extracted from plants, uh, some of which are subjected to hydrolysis in order to improve their functionalities such as solubility and cross-leaking capacity. The next steps is the formulation. The plant proteins are mixed with ingredients to develop meat texture such as food adhesives, plant-based fat and flow. Nutrition are added to match or exceed the nutrition profile of the meat. Processing the mixture of plant proteins and other ingredients undergo protein reshaping process, for example, stretching, kneading, trimming, pressing, folding, extrusion, to form a meat like texture. Innovative technologies being used to improve the organoleptic properties of PBMs include shelf cells technology, mycelium cultivation. 3D printing and recombinating proteins additives. Following these trends, the market turned toward vegetables proteins, such as pulses, wheat, gluten, and soy protein, uh, which are processed into meat like products, also known as meat analogs. These products uh, approximate certain aesthetic qualities such as texture, flavor, and color and nutritional characteristics of specific types of meat. The development of new attractive food products is a challenge already, but this challenge becomes even greater considering that these products are meant at at a substitute for, for meat. The definition of meat analogs refers to the replacement of the main ingredients which other than meat. It also called it a meat substitute, meat alternatives, fake or mock meat and imitation of the meat. The increased importance of meat analog in the current trend is due to the health awareness among consumers in their diet and for a better future environment. The factors that lead to this shift is due to low fat and calorie food intake, flexitarians, animal disease, natural resources depletion, and to reduce greenhouse gas emission. This chapter discusses the insight concerning plant-based meat analogs, their production, their, their production and future developments. Source of protein for the meat analogs. You can see that the key to getting the right amounts of proteins and all the necessary amino acids is to combine different grains with different vegetables and pulses such as beans and rice or tofu with broccoli, for example. Variety is key when it comes to being vegan and not using substitute products such as vegan cheese to make up any deficiency as they are technically a processed food and other a little health benefits. Extrusion technology, well known in the plastic industry, 
has now become a widely used technology in the agri-food processing industry, where is the referred to as extrusion cooking. Uh, it has been employed for the production of so-called engineered food and special feed. Generally speaking, extrusion cooking of vegetable raw materials deals with extrusion of ground material at barothermal conditions with the help of shell energy extracted by the rotate, rotating screw and additional heating of the barrel. The food material is heated to its melting point or plasticating point. In this change raw glucose status, the food is conveyed under high pressure through a dye or a series of dyes and the products expands to its final shapes. This uh, results is very different physical and chemical properties of the extrudates compared to those of the raw material used. Extrusion as uh, widely accepted process for manufacturing protein-based foodstuffs that are used in a variety of textured uh, convenience foods. Extrusion has been used for many years to produce texturized proteins, including span soy proteins isolates and extruded meat analogs, while other technologies such as uh, 3D printing uh, of proteins have only recently been introduced. Commercial feasibility has supported the development of free extrusion based methods for production of texturized proteins. The name of this is dry extrusion, wet extrusion and thermal extrusion. The development of each technology has been driven by consumers need and demands for products texture, nutrition and quality. Extrusion was first utilized for texturization of products in the late 1960s. At that time, the most popular raw material for production of texturized plant-based protein was solvent extracted. The fatted soy flour with approximately 50% protein, soy flour allows for controllable production of texturized proteins, both in, in chunk and minced forms that, that can that be, be added to meet as an extended or reformed in the consumer really plant-based meat analogs products. For more than 30 years, soy flour was the preferred ingredient for the extrusion because its availability, price and nutritional density is, it, it, it's of course okay. Extrusion allows a wide uh, range of protein sources to be continuously cooked using a combination of mechanism and thermal energy. The macromolecules in protein and acidous ingredients lose their native organized structure and form a continuous viscoelastic mass. As they pass through the extruder barrel and die, they are aligned in the direction of the flow. This uh, alignment exposes bounding sides that lead to cross-linking and reformat expandable texture that is responsible for the chevy meat-like te texture in, in plant-based alternatives. In addition to texturizing and uh, rexturizing plant proteins, the extrusion cooking process performs several other imp important functions, including denaturating protein, 
direct activating residual heat label growth inhibitors, controlling raw or bitter flavors, providing a homologous irreversibility bonded dispersion of the all micro ingredients through our a protein matrix. As new protein source, such as wheat gluten and pea protein were introduced into the marketplace, a greater emphasis was placed on understanding the protein properties that allow the successful extrusion processing. These include protein level, protein quality, oil level, fiber level, carbohydrate level, and particle size. The protein level in the raw materials is the most important property in terms of characteristics of the products made from that raw material and the process required to transfer the raw materials into a texturized intermediate. Raw materials with higher protein levels are more easily texturized and tend to result in products with stronger and firmer texture. When processed future into consumer products, they tend to be more resilient and uh, retain a meat-like texture and mouthfeel. Protein quality is also very important. For soy-based protein, quality is also very important. Measured by protein dispersibility or nitrogen solubility, solubility uh, index. Both our PDI and NCI tests measured the level of protein solubility, which reflected the heat treatment history of the raw materials preparation process. Higher levels of the heat treatment results in lower PDI and NCI values. In general, the PDI test will give lower results than the NEI's test. In the raw materials have a longer PDI, more mechanical energy often is required to effective value, texture the material. Also the PDI test can be utilized for other raw material sources such as pea and chickpea it does not fully capture the ability of a protein to gel and be texturized. After cooling, the gel strength is um, determining using a texture analyzer. As seen in the figure, protein, can, protein gels can have very different properties. Ranging from rubbery, film textures to soft, breakable textures without cohesiveness. Uh, the, the soy concentrate on the left is extremely soft and easy to cut, uh, as you can see at the, at the figure. The soy concentrate on the left is extremely soft and easy to cut, while the soy isolate on, on the right has a much tougher and firmer, almost rubbery texture. The gel strength for a variety of plant proteins are listed in the table. As illustrated by the final two entries in the table, materials that are classified the same, such as soy, isolate. You can have significantly different gel strength due to their processing histories. Additional information, such as the slope of the rise in cutting force and the length of time of cut through the materials, be collected and compared. The wall grinds uh, from which many protein source are derived usually contain some level of oil. Wall soybeans, for example, contains about 20% of oil, while other legumes contains much lower 
levels. In the extrusion process, oil acts as a lubricant within the extruder barrel and uh, interface with the addition of mechanically energy to the products. Raw materials containing higher oil levels often require an uh, alteration of the extruder screw and dry configuration to effectively texturize the products. In addition to the lubrification effects, a higher residual oil level dilutes the protein level. Warp dry sources of raw materials can also contain significant levels of fiber, usually concentrated in the seed, hull, or pericarp. Fiber interferes with texturization by diluting the protein level and causing discontinuous in the texturized matrix. Fiber levels exceed uh, three to four often results in the products with a rough texture and an increased quantity of fineness is created during extrusion and drying of the texturized protein. Dry extrusion processing uh, is the most common method utilized to create texturized proteins for several reasons, including the fact that it allows the widest range of the raw materials, has the broadest flexibility in creating texture, and it is the most cost-effective methods for the production of high volumes of the products. Typically, this process will operate with an extrusion moisture level of 20 to 35 percent, followed by drying to create a shelf stable moisture content in the final products. A diagram of a typical dry extrusion process flow used to produce texturized vegetables proteins is shown in this figure, which you can see at the at at the presentation. Feeder, the feed bin and feeder provide a means of uniformly metering raw materials, whatever they be granular or flowery in the nature, into the preconditioner and uh, subsequently into the extruder. The design of the feeder needs to enable control of the flow of raw materials. Some materials can be problematic to handle due to their hydroscopic nature or the fine particle size. This is important that the feeder is designed to matter raw materials in the continuous flow and at the controlled rate into the preconditioner or extruded. Thus, the feeders can be simpler single screw. Uh, or more complex twin screw feeders and uh, are chosen based on the flow properties of the raw materials. Preconditioner. Without the preconditioning, uh, it can be challenging to, to produce texturized vegetables proteins with good laminar structure. Vegetable proteins that are not preconditioned have a strong tendency to expand rather than laminate due to non-uniform moisture penetration that does not allow alignment of protein molecules. Uniform and complete moisture penetration of raw ingredients significantly improves the stability of the extruder and final product's quality. In addition, by completely plasticizing the raw materials particles prior to their introduction into the extruder. Extruder were caused by abrasive material. Particles is greatly reduced. During the preconditioning step, measure is uniformly applied into the form of water and 
our lives team to achieve a moisture context content of 18 to 25 percent. Water is uh, introduced through a series of spray, nozzles that atomize the water steam and therapy reduce the mixing load on the preconditioner. Steam is added through a manifold to the preconditioner. The plumbing for the steam simply must be designed to supply a continuous flow of condensate free steam. Uh, if the steam added to the preconditioner contains pocket of condensate, an unstable extrusion process will result due to rapidly wearing major contents. Flavorants, coloric agents, and other liquid additives may be introduced at this phase of the process to ensure through the continuous mixing of all the foodstuffs entering the extruder barrel. Extrusion processes that not utilize effective preconditioner often operate at the lower capacities and require larger main drive motor for the extrusion and longer lens to diameter, diameter uh, ratio to create comparab comparable texture. There are many conventional methods of uh, classification of food extruders, but in our opinion, the most practical is the one talking into account the following three factors. The first, the method of generating mechanically friction energy converted during extrusion into heat. Uh, we, can, uh, we can obtain three types of extruders. Autogenics, source of heat is the friction of the particles uh, of the material caused by the screw rotating at the high speed. Isothermic, in uh, other way, heated. And polytropic, as a mixed. The amounts of mechanical energy generated two types of, of extruders. Low pressure extruders, producing relatively limited share rate, high pressure extruders generating large amounts of mechanical energy and share. And the third, the construction of the plasticizing unit, you can see this at, at, at this feature, where both the barrel and the screw might be designed as a uniform integrated body or fix it with separate uh, uh, modules. Extruder used for the manufacture of uh, texturized vegetables proteins are either single screw or twin screw in design. In both cases, the final product texturized uh, is produced by the screw and barrel profile. Screw speed processing conditionings, for example, temperature, temperature, uh, moisture, moisture, raw material characteristic and dye section, meet extenders successful produced from the fatted soy protein using single screw extruders were the first products introduced in the early 1970s. And single screw extruders continued to be the dominant extrusion technology utilized for many years. As additional proteins become available and markets began to extend into value added products, twin extruders predominated because they are very, very flexible systems and can be configured to produce a wide range of final products. Recent analysis of the production cost of single screw versus twin screw extruders has shown that also 
think screw extruders have higher capital investments cost, the long term operating costs are similar to single screw extruders. Coupling this uh, effect with greater up time and process stability results in twin screw extruders being the most cost co most uh, mm, cost efficient option for for most producers. The temperature rise in the extruder barrel is primarily generated by mechanical energy dissipated through the rotating screws and uh, many be assisted uh, by the direct injection of uh, steam or external thermal energy source. The screw profile might be altered by utilizing screw elements of different pitch with interrupted flighting or by adding mixing lobes configured to convey aders uh, in a reverse or forward direction. All of these processing factors increase the dove temperature until the protein reaches its reaction temperature and is texturized. Each plant protein has an ideal processing temperature at which the highest quality texturizes it created. This temperature can be ranged from 120 to 160 degrees of Celsius, but optimal temperatures for the plant's protein typically range from 130 to 135 degrees. At desert temperatures, the long and twisted protein molecules uh, completely unrival. As the material exists, the extruders and flows through the final dye, the protein strands are stretched and aligned. Uh, the combination of shear, temperature and uh, rotation time causes cross-leaking between the protein's fibers and uh, ultimately yields uh, texturized products, that is uh, layered and uh, resistance. This thermal denaturation or cross-linking is an uh, irreversibly endothermic chemical reaction. The extent of cross-linking seems to be a function of time temperature and moisture history, which can be related to change in the apparent viscosity of the extrudate. A wide variety of extruder designed is offered for this purpose. However, it should be mentioned that the old method of cutting pre-shaped pieces of dove out of a sheet with lower cutters is still in use because the complicated shapes of snacks lead to very expensive dyes and dye heads for cooking and forming extruders. Here the lack of knowledge of the physical behavior of a temperate dove and the unknown relations of the transport phenomena of heat, mass, and momentum to the physical and physiochemical properties of the food in the extruder are clearly noticed. Also, modern control techniques are very helpful in controlling the mass flow in single screw extruders. In many cases, it's a big advantage to, uh, to use extruders with better mixing and more steady mass flow than single screw equipment can uh, can offer. This is demonstrated by the data illustrated in the figure, which relate the water absorbing ability of a and texturized soy concentrate to the level of mechanical energy input. As a 
mechanical energy increases, there is a resulting rise in water absorption. After a centennial level of mechanical energy input, however, water absorption begins to decline, indicating oversharing of the protein. The is utilized uh, for texturized vegetable proteins are usually one of two types. Phase dyes of ferrified dyes, the operatings of phase dyes are positioned such as that the extrudate exists the dye in the same actual direction as the overall flow through the extruder. In the case of peripheral dyes, the extrudate exists the dye at right angles to the direction of the overall flow through the extruder. The choice uh, of which type of uh, dye to use for a particular product and process depends entirely on the nature of the product and raw material used to the product is. In case uh, in which high dyes restrictions is required to increase mechanical energy input, but large amounts of open area are required in the final dye for proper products shaping a uh, venturi dye concept might be used. This allows restriction to be added to the extruder by the venturi dye and then a streamlined spicer is used to channel the material to the final shaping, regardless of the types dyes utilized for the texturized vegetables protein, should be promote smooth streamlined flows that do not disrupt of causes shearing effect in the already laminated and cross-linked linked protein uh, molecules. What is the post-extrusion process? Texturized vegetable proteins is discharged from the dye and carried by a belt convenior or pneumatic convenient line either directly to the dryer or to a wet milling devices. A wet milling device creates products with a flaked appearance or more or a sliced minced cut. The style of cut affects the final texture and mouthfeel and should be chosen based on the final product's application. After wet milling, the products is conveyed to the dryer. The dryer used for texturized vegetables products, usually a conveyor style, dry in which the drying air is heated either with steam or combustion barnet. In the horizontal conveyor, conveyor dryer, the product products is spreaded on the belt that moves through the zones where heated air is passed through the product. After the air is circulated through the product, a portion of it is exhausted to carry away the water removed from the product, and the remainder is mixed with fresh incoming air, reheated and then passed through the products again. This dryer can be single or multiple pass in the design, depending on the configuration required to fit the plant local, local, localization and to be adequately dry the product. A horizontal convenient dry provides excellent control of retention time and results in uniform drying. There are several products factors that determine how the products will dry, the moisture content, size, shape, and density of the incoming products, all 
alter its characteristic drying curve. Temperature, time, bed depth, and air velocity are all controlled within the dryer to accomplish both complete and uniform drying. After drying, the product is cooled. Fineness are removed and the product is segregated into the appropriate size range and sent to holding beans to packaging. This intermediate product is subsequently used in the downstream processing by the food service industry to create meat alternative solution or meat replacements. In the case of uh, the examples, uh, the soy flour chunk at and uh, wet milling concentrate booth uh, required about five minutes of drying time to reach 10% moisture. Even through the wet milling concentrate starts at be a significantly higher moisture content, its product size and shape allow water to be realized more quickly compared with a soy floor chunk. In contrast, the dense meat analog requires a drying time that is about 19 to 20 minutes longer than the other products, both due to its higher incoming moisture contents and the slow release of water due to its dense structure. High moisture processing. The technology was first investigated in the late uh, 1970s with the development of an extrusion system called Unitex. The Unitex system was made using two single screw extruders, the first for cooking and the second for aligning and laminating the fiber structure. As shown by the products displayed in the upper left corner of of this feature, the Unitex process produced a very distinct layer structure that mimicked natural cuts of meat. The process was not fully commercialized until the 1990s, when it was simplified for dual sing single screw cooking extruders to a twin screw extruders for cooking the proteins and the additional of a long cooling dye to develop the desired fibrous and laminar texture. Today, the types of ingredients and mixing systems used are very similar to what is used for dry extrusion. As the material enters, the pro preconditioner, the process being to differ. The moisture content of the dry material is hydrated to approximately 35 to 45% of moisture to fully hydrate the proteins. This material then um, enters the extruders and additional water and mechanical shear were added to produce a high temperature met with moisture levels in the 55 to 70% of range. The products leave the dye at the temperatures that is laid down 100 degrees to prevent expansion and separation of the fiber structure. It's then cut and milled into smaller pieces. Due to the high moisture level, the material is hung via cold chain process in which flavors and binders are mixed with the extruded intermediate and uh, then the textured protein is formed into final consumer products and flash frozen or chocolate. 
high moisture excited products. The high moisture process allows premium products to be created that have the look and mouthfeel of real meat. But due to the lower outputs for similar sized extrusion systems, the products will always entail a higher production cost than dry texturized materials. The field extrusion by the technology that is uh, utilized for creating plant-based alternatives is the thermal extrusion system called the power heater. Uniquely, the previous discussed cooking extrusion process, the power heater system, is an uh, in very, uh, in very wet process. Dry protein, carbohydrates, fiber, and fat are combined with oil and water in a bowl chopper and mixed to create a hydrate emulsion. It's similar to meat emulsion which we can obtain with uh, mixing uh, in a bowl chopper of different type of meat. The emulsion is the pulpit through the power heater, where it is the heated by indirect thermal energy to set the structure. As it exists, the dye, the material is laminated, creating a fibro structure. Once Texturize it, the material can be cut and shaped into crumbles, cubes, and stripes, or reformed into consumer ready goods such as uh, burgers or other kinds of products. Because the products have high moisture contents, around 60 to 75 percent, they need to be handled via cold chain process, similar to the high moisture extrusion process. Although the power heater system has many similarities to the cooking extrusion process, there are some unique differences between the process. First, the power heater is a wet, it's, it's a wet process and requires the processors to be able to handle it and create emulsion through the extrusion. Second, most of the energy comes from indirect thermal heat rather than from a combination of mechanical, mechanical and thermal energy. When scaling up products made in the power heater system to a high capacity, multiple units are installed rather than larger diameter machines. You can see at these uh, slides uh, texturized vegetables proteins uh, obtained from the soya, also known as soybean or soybean pretzels. Okay, and uh, at the last of slides, I want to present the mycoproteins from the Fusarium venenatum. The process of bringing mycoproteins into the marketplace began long before the first products was market in 1985. However, the decision to develop a meat substitute based on the fungal mycelin was taken by the British company Ranks Hoofs uh, McDougall. Uh, during the 1960 and was followed by more than 15 years of research, development, and toxicity testing before approval for the sale of the new food products was obtained from the British Ministry of Agriculture. Because of uh, its high fiber context, content, corn had been found to help decrease blood cholesterol levels and could encourage reduced energy intake. Fusarium venenatum is used to make mycoprotein or texturized vegetable protein, a meat substitute that is flavored and texturized to resemble chicken or beef and format into patties, cubes, sausages, <coughs> 
deli slice and uh, cutlets. It is marketed as being a healthy food, a good source of protein and fiber, lower in fat and saturated fat than meat equivalents. Manufacturers also claim improved taste and texture over soy-based equivalent products. It con contains dietary fiber in the form beta and 1.6 glucan glucans and, and achitin, which may also act as a probiotics. Corn in the is, is, is the brand name for a line of foods made from mycoprotein from the Fusarium venenatum. Corn products takes the form of fox chicken patties, nuggets and cutlets, as well as imitation ground beef. It springs from a single cell fungus grows in the large fermentation watts, which is processed and texturized to produce a food which can be easily mistaken for meat. Generally, the filamentous fungus is best chosen for the production of a meat substitute because it was believed that uh, the mycelia could was impart a fibrous texture comparable to that of meat to the final products. To make a similar product textures with pro mycoprotein, the fungal biomass was mixed with uh, a binding agent, uh, for example, uh, as uh, egg albumin, flavoring agents, and other ingredients depending on the, the, the desired final, final products. After heating, the proteins binder has uh, been found to get converted into a gel that binds the hyper to work together. Extrusion then result in products that have similar texture properties to those found in meat products. Corn products include sticks, burger, chicken breast, as well as sliced meats and ready meats such uh, as lasagna, for example. Nutritional benefits arise from mycoproteins due to its chemical compounds, composition. The cells walls of the hypna are the source of dietary fiber, heating and glucan. The cell membranes have been reported to be the source of polyunsaturated fatty acids, while the cytoplasm as the source of the high quality protein. Fusarium venenatum for mycoprotein production is grow under strictly defined conditions with temperature, pH, nutrition concentration, dissolved oxygen and growth rate, all maintained constants. In early development, had used styrate tank fermentation for scale up. However, because their filamentous morphology, cultures of fungi are more viscous than bacteria uh, cultures and are more difficult to mix, this was eventually solved by the formation of a joint venture with ICI in 1984 and the development of the current air lift fermentation technology. Figure shows that air lift fermentation processes and elegant simply that uh, release on the introduction of air at the base of the fermenting column, creating millions of micro bubbles that then rise up the full height of the fermented column at which point the glass descent gases, causing a density difference and the liquid to fall and the process to being once again. 
In a continu continuous flow culture, growth of the fungus can be restricted by the supply on uh, any nutrition, but it's usually limited by the concentration of the carbon and energy source, for example, glucose and other sugars. With all other nutrition prevents in excess. However, continuous flow culture avoid the fluctuating conditions uh, inherent in batch cultures and enable perpetual exponential growth of the organism to be mated at the specific growth rate, approaching its uh, maximum rate of growth for the prevailing conditions. In practice, mycoprotein fermentation are run for about six weeks, which uh, yields uh, uh, productivity some fivefold greater than what could be achieved by a series or separate batch fermentation. In this way, uh, and starting with just a few milligrams of pure culture, it is possible to grow from this to produce over 1,500 tons of mycoprotein before the fermenter, uh, fermenter I'm sorry, uh, run is terminated. Current practice in mycoprotein production is to determine the fermentation when more highly branched variants begin to supplant the sparsely branched culture. I think it's uh, all of uh, what I show you. Thank you very much for your attention. If you want some uh, references, you can see this uh, at this picture. Thank you very much. Bye.